So what I actually did was uh, I started off with the idea of eating for one month only in McDonald's and only eating the burger patties, not the bun, the fries, the sauce, the Coke, the ice cream, anything else, only the beef. Um, and so that my goal was to do that for one month and then just do like basic measures like body weight, mood, performance, and also a blood panel before and after. So, you know, it's not a scientific experiment at all. It's just a, a fun a fun experiment. Really, it's just a stunt um, <laughs> just to, to, to see what happens and also to allow me to, to then discuss some of the actual scientific evidence around the healthfulness of eating red meat, um, which I'm, I'm actually just in the middle of editing a video about doing that experiment. Mm. And I ended up doing it for two months. Um, oh, wow. Uh, so... When I got to, when I got to four weeks, I just I felt I felt really good, and I just thought I'll just make it six weeks, and then and then I got to six weeks and I went to book my blood draw, and it was quite soon before Christmas and my local doctor's office couldn't give me an appointment till way way after Christmas into the new year, so I just thought oh, I'll just leave it over Christmas then and just make it two months. Uh, so it's sort of by accident that ended up being two months, but it was also interesting uh, to to do it a little bit longer. I, the whole thing was a very interesting experience. Also, just like even down to like spending that much time, just being in a fast food restaurant like that, mm. and observing observing the people who who went there, and observing the staff and the the whole thing. It was it was amazing. I mean, one of the most amazing things was just to see how busy they were. I mean, I remember eating in McDonald's like, you know, years ago as a teenager uh, when they first came to Glasgow. And um, I mean, they were always fairly busy, but not like now. Jeez, mm. oh, like from, from dawn till dusk, they're just queued out and all the staff, I felt so sorry for the staff that worked there because they're just, they're completely stressed. They're just like piling food out of windows as fast as they can do it. And wow. people were asking me like, uh, did people not um, question you about ordering only burger patties? Because right. that's a strange. But they were far too busy to be concerned about <laughs> what the order was. <laughs> they didn't even notice that the same guy was coming in day after day and they only no. eating burger patties. They're too no. busy. They wow. Did not. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, so all of that was quite interesting. But uh, so, like, what happened? Um, I. Um, lost three and a half kilos in body wow. weight. Um, okay. Now I have to caveat that though, though and say that I, on the running diet, I did do a, a, a more, a, what people would call a moderate carb diet, higher carbohydrate than I would normally eat. And that normally makes, makes my weight climb, which it did. So in a sense, my weight was, my starting weight was sort of elevated. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I, it's maybe it's maybe more fair to say that it normalized back down to where it would be. <laughs> that makes sense, right? The yeah. Previous diet. Um, I also felt really good. I was climbing really well, um, and my blood panel um, was <laughs> actually the best blood panel I've had out of all the diet experiments I've had. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Now, wow, that's have... fascinating. I have to caveat that as, as well by saying um, that depends a little bit on your point of view. So sure, yeah. One one part of the blood panel that um, might be the most controversial part for many people would be LDL cholesterol, the, the so-called bad cholesterol. So for me, that always runs about the top end of the reference range. Which, if people know the reference range, that tops out. It differs between countries, but around 120 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. Okay. And that, and my cholesterol numbers on a whole range of different diets seem to fluctuate roughly between those numbers. So it went from like, I think it was like 120 to 127. <laughs> okay. So it was a rise that was like, it's so small that it's just random noise. It's, it's almost nothing, but it is still high. It, that is still slightly out of the reference range. So some people would be like, ah, that's that's too high. You need to reduce that. Yeah. Um, I would say it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, but some other numbers like my HDL cholesterol, the so-called good cholesterol, rose quite a fair bit. 
and my triglycerides, the, the amount of fat in your blood, dropped quite a bit. Hmm. And the ratio between those two numbers, triglycerides to HDL ratio, that is a quite an important overall marker of metabolic health. It's a good proxy for many other things such as insulin sensitivity um, and uh, the, the size of your ApoB particles in your blood. All these things are important for metabolic health and risk of future disease. My HDL to triglyceride ratio dropped nearly in half from about 1.5 down to 0.7. And that, that was by far the biggest change in the whole panel. Most of the other and that's a good thing. That's going in the that's a good know, thing. positive yeah, I mean, direction. Like, so 1.5 would already be considered good, um, but 0 0.7 would be considered excellent. You know, the, the lower is better for, for that marker. Hey friends, I'm interrupting my own video to tell you guys about follow-up episodes. So the video that you're watching right now is from a follow-up episode that I did on the podcast, which means that the full version is only available for patrons who support the podcast for $5 per month or more. You can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash the nugget climbing. There's a link right there in the description for this video. Again, five bucks per month, super quick and easy to sign up and you can cancel at any time, no questions asked. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. Let's say now for the next six months or a year, I go back to eating a standard ketogenic diet with uh, plenty of plants and, you know, animal foods as well, just a, a mixed, mixed diet in that sense. And, um, after six months, I just don't feel very good and I feel a bit weaker. Well, then I could go back onto a carnivore diet, not from McDonald's, I have no reason to go back to eating McDonald's. <laughs> that was just a stunt. But mm -hmm. I could, I could, if I really thought, maybe I should try a pure carnivore diet again, then I could try it and eat that way for another period and see if it reversed it. So I mean, yeah, in, in a sense, in a sense, maybe I am on a diet experiment and I'm reverting to a, a longer term diet, which has worked quite well for me in the past. Um, and I'll play it by year. And if I feel like I'm continuing to see good results, then great. And if, if I feel like things could be better, then maybe I'll experiment again. Mm. Yeah. Um, so in that video where I'm talking about the McDonald's diet, my, my conclusion from it really is just that I couldn't find any detriment to, to my health and um, I'm a little bit cautious to conclude that there was that there was benefit because okay. I do think yeah. I, I do think that um possibly the benefit just came from just going out and pulling like hell on on hard projects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that is a confounder potentially and that might explain the results um I, I have often thought that that um, maybe just trying really, really hard is that that's actually what makes people strong. And if you're if you if you're on climbing, which is extremely powerful, um, on real rock, then that might be as good or better than than being on a fingerboard, especially if it's applied consistently. Mm. Comes back to consistency as the yeah what, yeah yeah totally yeah. Yeah, but who knows? I mean, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of things where I'm like, again, I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs>